Welcome back to Junkin' with Junior, folks. We're on the road, headed to pick up an old tractor. We're going agriculture instead of automotive this time. A friend of ours has got an old tractor that we need to get tuned up and dialed in, running just right for him. So we're gonna see what we've got in this old dude. Got an exhaust leak right here. Well, we can fix that too. It's right here where this piece bolts onto this. Yeah. And I don't know what this clamp is here. It's either a gasket or it's just yeah. rusted out and blowed out all together but we can but i, I want you to tell me it. yeah it's doable that's just a leak from here yeah from the drain yeah what is that man well, it's a drain they had those up north so when yeah. it froze you can oh. dump it out down here we ain't yeah. gotta worry about it we water can, yeah uh let me see what's texting she's Stop. a sweetheart what yeah. year 49 49er perfect I mean, the tires are cracked, but you probably don't need to replace them. Yeah, I don't want to have a jump. fix her up. I want to paint it all up. They look like you probably got a ton of air in them, too. Yeah, and then, I mean, everything. I just put a brand new battery in it. Back. This guy here. Ain't she pretty? Time to get this old gal running a little better running really rich something's going on with the spark plug or carb situation looks like a diesel back here but it's not it's gas powered we gotta pull these drum brakes see if uh they just need to be adjusted or if we gotta put some new shoes in there because the brakes are not so good at all so took the carb off this tractor last night because it was dripping and we knew that that needs to be repaired so might as well start with the things that are obvious that we know needs to be fixed got her unbolted right there She's a good old updraft model. Took it to work, soaked it in the cleaner, put it all back together. And we're gonna put that thing back on tonight, see how it runs. One other thing that I wanna do, cause we've got three spark plugs that are not firing very good. Um, and one is firing pretty decent uh, that I found out last night. So that's why I wanted to rebuild the carb in case it's flooding over getting too much fuel in it fouling out the plugs so before we put the carburetor on I do want to do a compression test on this old jewel make sure we don't have any issues going on with valves not sealing or burned or anything like that because then it doesn't matter what we do to the carburetor or anything it's never going to run right but we know it needs to be rebuilt anyway so went ahead and did it so even if we do have to pull the head do any valve job then the carburetor is already good to go so let's move on to a compression test All right, so there's all our spark plugs. Maybe you can kind of see these front two are definitely wet. The rear third one is wet. Fourth one is actually dry. So that's what's leading to this compression test. Let's do it. So we're gonna leave our ignition off to do this compression test so we don't have to worry about it firing, you know, shocking us off through the plug wires or any metal that it may be touching. But here's one cool thing about this old tractor. There's no key switch, no push button, but there is a shifter. So we got the classic old neutral position, but when you go all the way over here and forward, there's your starter. The starter linkage is made onto the shifter inside underneath this plate here, makes contact, sends power to the starter. Pretty cool rig. So we've got 120 pounds of compression on that first cylinder. Let's go down the line and check the rest of them. Cylinder number two. Pretty close to that same 120-ish, so, so far, looking good. Cylinder number three. Oops. That's always exciting when you forget to connect it all the way. Always gotta make sure that little collar's up there so that that doesn't happen. Let's try it again. Sitting on that 120 mark again. And cylinder number four. Oops. 
So all of them are right at that 115 to 121-ish mark on the compression. So that makes me feel really good. We don't have anything to be worried about there. We know our valves are sealing when we've got good compression like that. So no issues uh, mechanically, internally. So I say let's keep moving forward with this thing. We're going to get that carburetor put back on there. I do need to get some new spark plugs uh, because three of those are definitely not so hot. They could have been fouled for a long time. But we'll start with some new plugs. Next would be the ignition, the distributor system itself. We may wind up going electronic on this thing. The owner actually said he wants to. So we're probably going to do that and just get rid of the old points altogether, even though they've worked for the last, oh geez, what is this thing? Uh, 49. So it's worked for the last 70 years, 71 years. Um, you know, it does have some play inside the distributor. So we might wind up changing out this whole unit. We're going to do a little research and see what we can find there. But we're going to fix the things that we know need to be fixed first. Carburetor, spark plugs, always start with the basics. We know we've got gas going to it. Um, good clean gas as well. Uh, the cool old sediment bowls that they had here. So this is actually your first filter. That was all it had back in the day. But somebody's added a little plastic inline job. And these are cool too, because whenever you're not running it, you'll shut it off. So you don't have to worry about the needle and seat dripping out the fuel. And then when you need to run it again, open her up and the gas flows right on through just like you need it to. So going to get some of these basics covered and see if we can make this thing run better. All right, now let's see if we can get this high performance cold air intake installed. See, all you import guys, you've been doing it wrong. Y'all want your air filters pointing out the front of the car and all that kind of dumb stuff. <clears throat> what you need to do is point it towards the back like an exhaust pipe. Run her up to this air filter here, which is the real deal, requires oil. This stuff was figured out long before k and ever had the idea, folks. An oil bath air cleaner. There you have it, folks. One high performance cold air intake installed well out of the way of the exhaust up here because she's going down there. It brings me to another point. We do have a pretty good exhaust leak right here. So we are going to have to uh, spray a little bit of luby goob on there and make sure we get these broke loose without breaking them hopefully uh, and see what's going on inside there uh, as far as missing the gasket or if we just need to weld something together has some kind of an adapter plate here um, the gasket appears to be good in there not leaking around it so we are not going to mess with those rusty bolts just going to repair what we need to do down here but so far so so for those of you that don't know the old oil bath air cleaner sucks the air in there whips it all around and all the dust hits the oil settles to the bottom she's full of oil so we're good to go on this one we'll put that right back on where we found it and that part of the tune-up is complete so we got our massey ferguson distributor here went ahead and took the points out of this thing because it's just not running very well at all uh the other day i sanded the points down uh you know just to make sure they'd get a good contact and it ran good for about 10 seconds and then it went to running like garbage again so, so I think we got a points problem here. So we pulled all that old stuff out of here and the points are as generic as the day is long. Really a, just a garbage set of points. So I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but this circle should be made it up to this one perfectly. And you can see that it's only hitting it about half. So they're really offset, which gives you a terrible contact. And not only that, I'm going to try to hold this steady and you can see how much play all this other stuff has in it. So even if you set these points accurately one time, as soon as the engine makes, you know, one rotation, these are completely misaligned and just total garbage again. And the points are actually starting to get ate away quite a bit from where they're not lined up and getting a good clean break like they should. So if we had a quality set of points, it would probably be a good running uh, distributor and engine. But I'm not a points man, I'm electronic. So we're going with the old tried and true Pertronics kit here. Really simple. You just take the points and condenser out and obviously the screw with the insulator that passes through the housing so it doesn't ground out because that's where our new wires are going to go. A couple of screws to hold this down, feed our wires through, put a grommet on there, 
directly to the positive and negative side of the coil, and in theory, we should be running good again. So our Pertronics kit is installed, it's that simple. Once you get this old junk out of the way, then you just bolt this one down. It has one screw that holds it down here. It locates on the old points adjusting screw, and it also locates on this old points pin that it, the points would rotate on. That's it, it's that simple. Feed our two wires through with the rubber, rubber grommets, so that's a nice sealed unit again. We put the factory rotor and the factory cap back on this distributor and we are back up and running. Time to get our distributor installed back in this tractor. We're gonna put it in, line our rotor up so that it's pointing at the number one terminal. We're gonna put the rotor on this dust shield that they have. So that goes on there like that. The rotor I just knocked off in the dirt. Here she is. Now we know that's not 100% correct, but we've gotta start somewhere. Get this coil wire out of here because we're gonna change that coil out as well. Now, this back make us some room let's see this is gonna go goes on there just like that it fits very sloppy so it's kind of amazing that the thing works as well it didn't really work good at all that's why we're doing this but we're gonna straighten all that out so we've got that in here we can actually get it pointing back to where it was and put the bolt back in the clamp down here and our timing should be really close but we do have to double check it uh, when it's all said and done just to make sure that we're not too far advanced but we're gonna see so all right so we got our distributor installed it has the clamp but it also has a screw that we can loosen up on it so that we can adjust the timing because the mount is fixed down in here with this bolt but for now we can turn this to get it as close as possible to this number one terminal I'm gonna just move my finger down here from the number one and we can turn it to line that up within firing range. I'll tighten up that screw and it'll be roughly set and should fire. Distributors installed with the new Protronics kit, new set of plug wires that aren't chewed up, new ignition coil to match a Protronics unit, wired up, We've got our gas turned on there. Give her some ignition, see if this old gal will fire up. A kitten, oh my god, so much better. Still got a find the timing mark in the balancer, there's a flywheel hole down here. But for now, just got to ballpark it old school because the throttle's all the way down right now. So these tractors do idle pretty low. Man, that sounds good. timing on this thing for sure but as far as i'm concerned this thing's ready to go to work again well that's it for this episode folks thanks for watching junk with junior hope you enjoyed uh, the little tune-up situation on this old ferguson tractor remember if you've got an old one get those points out of it get yourself a protonics kit and i'll guarantee you it's going to run better this one went from running on one cylinder to all four of them so she'll pull down a pine tree now Remember to give us the old thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and stay tuned for more episodes of Junkyard with Junior coming up. Thanks for watching again, and we will see you next time.